person and that behavior. I have no idea. I'm sorry. I've been unaware. Please forgive me for not knowing how I participated. Because our beliefs are unconscious. We don't know, for the most part, what they are. You can find them. I have different ways in The Missing Secret and some of my other books to investigate those. But you don't need to know them. So you're saying, please forgive me. I did not know. I was totally unaware. You're saying thank you. Thank you is an incredible gratitude, incredible motivator. It is connecting you to the divine. You're thanking the divine for taking care of this, for cleaning the beliefs, the negativity, the limitations, whatever that programming was that created that person in Dr. Len's life. And then I love you. And I love you to me is the most powerful free, three phrases. It is the mantra that can change the planet. As I'm standing up here, I've learned to do this, so it's my new self-talk. Instead of having the self-talk most of us have that is very critical of ourselves and other people, my self-talk is, I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you, I love you. I'm saying it to you right now with an awareness of the divine as I'm saying it. So Dr. Hulen would say this to the divine repeatedly. He'd do it for every patient. Within a few months, these patients didn't have to be shackled. They didn't have to be sedated. Within six months, some of them were being released. Within two years, almost the entire ward was released, pronounced as healed. Mentally ill criminals locked up, never expected to be released. Is this not amazing? And he's doing it with something you and I can do. And what we are doing is cleaning those counter intentions. So that when you say, I want this house, I want this romance, I want this wealth, I want world peace, I want to do whatever it happens to be, fill in the blank. When you say that, and you realize that it's not happening yet, and you get impatient, you get frustrated, you start to question everything and question everyone, and you're wondering if there's something wrong with you, whatever that feelings are, whatever those that come up for you, part of your awakening is to realize you can erase it all by taking it to the divine. You take it to the divine, whatever you're feeling. You're feeling it, you address your relationship to the divine, whatever that means for you. I'm sorry, please forgive me. Thank you, and I love you. I'm sorry, please forgive me. Thank you, and I love you. Is that not the simplest cleansing technique you've ever heard of? How many are already doing this? A lot of hands have already gone up. <coughs> When people say they want things, like we went through this whole list with the video that was shown beforehand, and there's cars up there, and there's houses up there, and there's all kind of other things that you would want up there, there's a great deception going on. There's a great deception going on up there. And that deception is you think when you get the car, the house, the relationship, the wealth, whatever that was that you're going for, you think you'll be happy. That's the great illusion. That's the great deception. You want to know why? Happiness is right here. I'm wearing this t-shirt, Live In Now, which I picked up. They're selling it at the booths. Not my booths, but one of the other booths there. Live In Now. That is the secret. That is the real secret. I don't know that it's missing, but it's right there in front of our face. It's pretty obvious. Part of this awakening is to realize that the point of power for you is right here in this moment. Now here's the great thing that happens. Here's the true miracle that happens. When you really get this and you look at this moment and you go, oh my God, look at where I'm at. Look at the people I'm, at, I'm with. Look at who I'm listening to. Look at the people that are in the booths over here. Look at everything that's going on in this whole facility. This is a miracle. This is a by God miracle. Look what Judd is doing, the man who's putting on this event here, by gathering all these people and all these great speakers. This is a miracle. It is happening here. It is happening now. But it's not just this now. This moment. This moment. This moment. All are miracles. 
When you get that and you feel that you are present, you feel that you are here in the moment, that's when things happen in your life that will be so spectacular you never could have imagined them before. And you couldn't imagine them before because your ego was doing the imagining. Your ego was saying, oh, I want this cool car. Well, the universe was saying, I got this really spectacular car to give you if you just give me a chance. Or you focused on a particular relationship with a particular person. I hear that one a lot. How do I get this one person to be attracted to me? There's six billion people on the planet. <laughs> Isn't there somebody that could be close to the qualities you're looking for besides this one you got a target on? When you come from this moment, the magic and the miracles happen. One of my favorite stories to tell is when I went on Larry King the first time. And we were all in the outside security place and some of my heroes were there. And we're all standing around all excited and we're getting our tags. We're going through security. And one of them slaps me on the back and says, isn't this fantastic? We're going on Larry King. And he said, I've been, I've been visualizing this for six years. And I said, really? I've just been doing it for two weeks. <laughs> And of course, it was just this macho thing I was doing with him, you know, trying to one-up him. And so we became good friends and all of that. The reality is, though, the punchline that he doesn't know that I'm telling you, I never visualized it. Never. Never. I answered the phone. That was it. And I got on the plane. I took action. And I had a great time. And the second time, I didn't visualize going back on. It was cool to go on the first time. I mean, that's something to put in your scrapbook, right, Larry King? The second time, they called the night before, wanting me to be on live the next night. Didn't visualize it. Didn't intend it. Answered the phone. Said yes. Scrambled to get on a flight. Got there early the next morning, did the flight, or did the show, and afterwards left. Magic and miracles happen when you are in this moment. Some of you have read some of my books like The Attractor Factor, and then you read some of the later books like Zero Limits, and you get a little confused because you say in The Attractor Factor, have an intention. And the movie The Secret is all about intentions. But now I say, I've given up intentions. So what's the truth? The truth of the matter is, I have not given up intentions. I've given up ego intentions. I do my best to come from what the divine wants for me. In order for me to know what the divine wants, I got to be here in this moment. Those of you who might have seen me, I have a booth here and I was hanging around the booth before coming on here. You probably saw that I was a little nervous. Why was I a little nervous? I didn't have a clue what I was going to say. <laughs> Nothing. I stood out there when they're putting the mics on me and uh, Mark Ryan, my friend, is around here someplace. He said, you doing okay? You know what you're going to talk about? And I said, Mark, I got nothing. <laughs> and Rhonda, who introduced me here at the beginning, who will be telling you about Miracles Coaching briefly in a little bit, she asked me about what I'm talking about. And I said, I, I never know. I'm going to be as surprised as anybody else when I get up here. That's because I have learned to come from the moment. Now, I'm not totally there. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been nervous. I wouldn't have had that little uh, thread of fear. But I'm human and I'm admitting it to you. It was there. Now I'm up here, not nervous at all. I'm just letting it come through. What's coming through is taking me beyond what my ego would have said. My ego would have mapped out a speech. My ego would have had a PowerPoint. My ego, ego would have had all kind of bullet points to go through for you. And it probably would have been entertaining. It probably would have been useful. But I want to go beyond that. I keep saying life is a process of awakening. I'm in this process too. I am awakening too. We all are. We're in this together. So where I'm at at this point is to tell people and to remind myself that what you really want is here. When you come from here, the divine will inspire you with what you want next. That's a divine intention. To give you a favorite example of mine, I do like cars and I do have a small car collection. If I wanted to have the largest car collection in the world, one so big that Jay Leno was jealous, <laughs> and Jay Leno would say, who the hell is this guy in Wimberley, Texas, who's got a bigger car collection than me? 
And he'd want to come out here and there'd be a little ego war coming on. You know, who has the best cars, who has the most cars, all of that. If I had that as a goal, pure ego, pure ego. The cars that I have acquired have both mostly come from inspiration. And often at the last minute. Some of you know that I managed to attract the car that Steven Tyler of Aerosmith had driven, an exotic race car made in 1998 that he, he, uh, they no longer make, that he drove and he wrecked at least twice. He signed the car, it's a collectible car. I found it on eBay like an hour before the auction was to close. And whoever was selling it didn't make a big deal about it being owned by Steven Tyler. And inside myself, something clicked in me that said, that is an investment opportunity. Have Steven Tyler's car, drive it for a, really, uh, for a little while, and then sell it as the Joe Vitale secret Steven Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how long of a headline you can put in eBay. But, <laughs> but that came more from a fun place. It came from a detached place. This is another part of this missing secret, is that you do want to clear these counter intentions. And you can do it with a simple method, such as the Ho'oponopono, the Dr. Len method. I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you, and I love you. As you're being more and more aware of where these intentions are coming from, you get clearer about whether it's an ego intention, and you notice where I point my finger, the ego seems like it's up here, head, intellect, thoughts, or if it's coming more from the divine, which seems to be coming from here. You can feel the difference with practice. And if you don't know the difference, you keep cleaning. The cleaning is, I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you, I love you. I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you, I love you. I think one of the things that people have a problem with is that they get too attached to the end result. They think, I gotta have that particular person, or they have to have that particular house, or they have to have that particular job, or they have to have that particular amount of money. That's when your ego is trying to control and that's a limitation. The universe is trying to give you more. You have to let go of the attachment. And people have asked me, what does that mean? You want to come from a place of playfulness. Wouldn't it be fun if I had more clients? Wouldn't it be fun if I had this particular kind of relationship? Wouldn't it be fun? Wouldn't it be cool? Wouldn't it be fantastic if I had this particular house or vacation or whatever it happens to be, fill in the blank. Notice the difference though. You're not attached to it. You're not addicted to it. If you have the feeling that I will live or die based on whether I get this or not, you're addicted to it. That addiction has an unconscious energy that is actually going to repel it from you. You have to have a playful energy. Wouldn't it be fun? Wouldn't it be cool? I watched the Donnie Deutsch CNBC TV show, The Big Idea. How many of you have seen that show? You all should watch it. Monday through Friday, CNBC in the evenings, Donnie Deutsch, The Big Idea. I did want to go on his show. I love his show. Notice how I'm talking about it. I love his show. I admire him. I was inspired by him. Craig Perrine and I wrote a book called Inspired Marketing. We dedicated it to Donnie Deutsch. So you can see, a lot of respect, a lot of love, a lot of passion. And I was feeling like I would love to go on his show. I would love, I just want to meet this man. I ended up going on a show. And I went on a show and had a riot. I was so excited. I was like this little kid sitting in the, on the plane, squirming in my seat, thinking, oh, I can't wait to get there. I'm going to meet Donnie Deutsch. I'm going to meet Donnie Deutsch. You know, I'm 54 and I'm sitting there like I was 12 or 8 or something. And when I got there, I was so excited to meet him. And I did get to meet him. And when they told me how long I'd be on the show, they said, you got like, Four minutes. Tell, tell the secrets of the universe in four minutes. You know, there's the camera. Start talking. Well, I did it, but I wasn't addicted. I wasn't attached to it. It was a playful, passionate longing that said it would be fun if I was on his show. That's the kind of mentality you want to have. These are all elements of what I call the missing secret. You want to keep clearing the counter intentions. Now, one of the best ways to clear the counter intentions that you, maybe, many of you already know about. Now, the first one, of course, is with the uh, Ho'oponopono, the Dr. Len method. I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you, and I love you. Did you just applaud for that? <laughs> How many of you are familiar with EFT? A lot of you. That's the tapping method 
<clears throat> and there is a DVD called Try It On Everything. They are selling it here, not at my booth, but I think it's in the far back. If you wander around, you'll see where it's at. And you can tap away a lot of the beliefs that come up. Somebody throw a belief to me right now. I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy is a very popular belief. I'm not worthy almost everybody has. In fact, almost all of us have what I call a level of deservingness within us that does not allow more good things. We push it away. This is an important insight. I've written about this. I talk about it in my audio program, The Missing Secret. You have a level of deservingness. It's a set point based on your unconscious beliefs. So when you feel that I'm not worthy, that's lodged in there and it's been there for a long time. You can tap it away. Now the DVD tried on everything will explain it better, but I'll give you the shorthand version. You take that belief, I'm not worthy, and you tap the underside of your karate chop, chop part of your hand, if you can all see that, and you say, even though I'm not worthy, I deeply love, accept, and forgive myself. In fact, let's all do that. Even though I'm not worthy, I deeply love, accept, and forgive myself. Even though I'm not worthy, I deeply love, accept, and forgive myself. By saying this, you're not anchoring the belief, you're actually releasing it. You're focusing on what you're going to release. So you're tapping here and you're taking the belief and adding, I deeply love, accept, and forgive myself. And then you would take it and you would tap the crown, not worthy. You would tap above both eyes, I'm not worthy. You tap under the nose, I'm not worthy. Under the lip, I'm not worthy. And over here where my mics are, I guess, I'm not worthy. And I do this tapping technique every day. I did it before I came on. I told you I was a little nervous, I tapped it away. Try it on everything as a clearing technique. The very name of the movie is telling you, try it on everything. So no matter what's going on in your life, try it. So another way is to have a coach. I'm a great believer in having a coach. Look, folks, I was homeless 30-some years ago. I told you that in my Dallas years. When I got to Houston, I struggled in virtual poverty for another 10 years. I was a car salesman. I was a reporter. I was a laborer. I was a truck driver. I was a cab driver. I went through all kind of things that I absolutely hated. I remember working for an oil company, and I cried going to work and going home because I was so profoundly unhappy. How did I go from being penniless, homeless, in poverty, to being a guy who collects rock star collectible cars, to lives a, lives a life of luxury, who spends almost every evening in my hot tub looking at the stars and saying, thank you for my life. How did I get there? That's one of the most common questions I get. I got there, first of all, because I'm always working on myself. I'm still working on myself. People who read my books can see the evolution of Joe Vitale just by reading those different books. I get there because I'm taking action. I am being persistent. I do have an intention. I am visualizing. I am reading all the time. Thank God for libraries. When I was homeless in Dallas, I can go to the libraries and read The Magic of Believing or Dale Carnegie's stuff, and I can work on me and find the help to move forward. But to be honest, all of that inched me very slowly forward. The thing that caused the quantum leap for me was having a coach. How many of you have a coach now? Well, quite a few of you do. See, by having a coach, this is somebody who can lovingly, joyfully, perceptively feed back your own beliefs. Because your beliefs are your beliefs, they seem like it's reality. You think it's reality. It's a belief created reality. Change your beliefs and you get a different result. Change your beliefs and you get a different result. I work with a coach. I talk about this in The Attractor Factor. I talk about it a little bit in my audio program, The Missing Secret. And by having a coach, I had somebody who was rooting for me, supporting me, encouraging me, and also shining a light on my beliefs in a joyful non-judgmental way. That was the number one thing that helped me shift. I'll give you a great example. I went through this whole phase, like most of us, or many of you may still be there, you think the more money you spend, the less money you have. Correct? Nope, you don't believe that one? How many believe that? The more money you spend, the less money you have. Doesn't it seem like good math? 
Doesn't it seem like that's what an accountant would say? Isn't that what the IRS would say? I used to believe that way. The more money I spent, the less I would have. I changed it. I changed it. I changed it. A coach pointed out that was a belief. That's not a reality. That's a belief. I'm calling it reality. It's a belief. Now, my belief is the more money I spend, the more money I receive. And I'll never be able to convince an accountant of that. But that's my reality. That is what happens to me. When I feel like buying something, it's in the back of my mind. You know, if I go ahead and buy this, or if I donate to this particular cause, or start this particular movement, movement and put a lot of money into it, many times that will come to me. It's my new belief. Because it's my new belief, it happens. It's the most astonishing thing. A coach helped me with that. Now, I'm going to invite Rhonda to come up here and talk about what my Miracles Coaching is about for a couple minutes, and then I'll come back to wrap this up. But I'll just be right here. Give a big hand to Rhonda. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. I just want to say that this man is so inspiring, and I know that you've been moved by what he said today. Um, I have such a privilege to uh, deliver the Miracles Coaching Program. Uh, I work with some amazing people and I'm inspired by this man every single day. I watch clients come into the program with a series of beliefs, just like Joe said. They have an idea about what their life can look like. They have an idea about the limits of what's available to them, the abundance that they can have in their life. They look for relationships. They look for success in business. They look for success in their families, with their children. They look for success physically. They're, they're burdened with illness. And I've seen time and time again, hundreds of people come through this program 